but um, I didn't come. I didn't come to the music from a mixer side. It came from like an artist producer side. So I can I can understand where they're coming from, but I could also understand where you can't put all your stock into like one song, right? Exactly. You could you yeah. could really kind of hurt your growth because more people don't really know about you. And you know, like what do you do if someone doesn't like the song and you spent a year on the song and no yeah. one listens to it, and no one likes it? And like, are you gonna be devastated? So it's yeah. more yeah. You have to be more in tune with your like your artistic process and just putting things out there and kind of just like because that's when you get the feedback, right? Like you'll get the feedback that you're getting better and that your songs are are doing well and you could you could see that growth, but if there's not enough music out there, you're never gonna get the feedback, you know? That's like if you're doing yes, one show. Exactly. Um mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know a story about it, um Ed Sheeran, he was saying um he performed like Got to outperform like uh, was it? I think it was a. Uh, I forgot there was a, there was a folk singer who performed like three hundred times a year, and like Ed Sheeran when he started out wanted to perform as much as that guy to anyone like five people, three people, and now that guy has like so many hits and he could perform on stadiums because he was just doing it every single day. He wasn't worried about whether he had five people in the crowd or if he had five thousand people. He was just like. I'm just gonna keep performing every single day. You're 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 gonna get better. It's like the compounding effect. I'm reading that book as well. Yeah, yeah, like, I read that book. It's great. Yeah. So like, remember that part in the book where he was saying like, between Tiger Woods and the second best uh, golfer in the world, like it's only like one percent difference. Like it's very right. very little, but like the outcome of like prize money and like winning it's PGA like Tour double is, like, or triple. Yeah, or yeah, something. triple. They, even they said a, a plane. Like if you're flying from like Los Angeles to New York, if you're one degree off, you end up in like Delaware, Washington D.C. Or yeah, something. yeah, 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 exactly. So yeah. like, yeah, yeah. That's the thing with our craft is like you can't, you can't think about it like one song is gonna change my life. You just gotta think of it as like one song, one mix, one song, one mix, one song, and you just keep at it. You really right, just and you know, you see, like it. those graphs where like things go up, things go down, things go up, but the pr the trajectory is in the that direction, you know. Yeah, you, 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 and it's you're never gonna go backwards if you're just putting in effort every single day. Like, it's right. not gonna happen. It may not happen as fast as you'd like. You know, I think you know. I always tell myself, like, you know, the people that I know who made it, they made it in their like, you know, early forties, maybe something like that. Like, it's. Even if you're in your 30s, it's, it's more of a long-term game. You know what I mean? So, like, just yeah. stay in there and um, do your best every day. Right. Yeah. I, I I think I, at a certain point, this is a few years ago, I kind of men mentally took a, made a decision that, like, I need to enjoy the process yeah, and not worry about where I'm at right now, but just keep at it and, like, the long game of just, like, eventually you'll get there. Let's enjoy this process. And, you know, like... Like I, I talk about this a lot, but like, you know, Gary Vee says people overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in a decade. Yeah. And uh, I found that uh, now that I've been doing this more than a decade, I find that to be very much so true. Wow. Look how much has happened in a decade. What are we doing this year? I don't know. I did some stuff in th this year, you know, some things improved, you know, but like, look at a decade, like, holy shit. It's like, you know, wh like, where am I going to be in another decade? You know, God willing, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's like Steve Jobs said, you know, it's like you connect, you can only connect the dots going backwards because like you can't connect right. the dots forward. He was like, oh, you know, when I took that class at the college and then all of a sudden it helped me make the font for the Mac. Like you can't. And when you when you get you know older in this business, like there's certain things that just don't upset you anymore. Like, you know, like yeah. it's like it, it doesn't affect you as much, so that you can just kind of move forward and you 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 grow thicker skin. And once you grow thicker skin, you're like, oh, I can handle that. You know, right? Yeah, I've, I've handled worse. And your ego becomes uh, more diminished as you get older, right? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you gotta have things check your ego because like your ego doesn't get checked something or someone is going to check it for you. You know what yes. I mean? Like you're, you're, you're totally, you can't think you're so on top of the world. You know, it's, success is like a spider web. Like you're just a spider in the middle, but you don't know that you're connected to so many different things. Like you yes. just think you're the center of the universe, but like you're, you're connected to so many variables that are like keeping you up there in the middle. So it's like, yeah, it's like 
the ego thing is just weird. You know, like it's as much as you want accolades, as much as I like accolades and things like that. And like those things are cool, but it's like, that's not what I do it for. And I always remember why I'm doing it in the first place. Like I love music and I want to make a living mixing songs. Simple. You know, that's simple mission statement, you know. Good yeah. things are just going to come out of that just because it's it's not it's not some something you know yeah 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 and 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 you're part of that web right and you're not necessarily you're not the center of the art of the songs web but you're an important spoke right like you know being the mixer you're a support you're part of the support you know yeah 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 at- you're, you're, you're a support team and, and your name is like super duper small in the back of a you know a CD or it may not even be on the Spotify credit so it's like you right. know um, right. shout out we so didn't come the- here for that. Yeah, shout out to all the <laughs> artists, producers, shout out their mixers and tag them. Yes. Oh my God, credits. My buddy, my buddy Travis, who you should meet, is uh, has another podcast. He's in LA uh, called Progressions, um, and he he's like trying to work this season. He's like asking everybody what their thoughts are on credits and just try to sh- shine a light on how little light is sh- is shown on on people in this industry. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes I don't know I I don't know the credits on records, and it's 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 kind of sad because it's like you can't even see who's involved. You might see like a videographer or like a makeup person, but I'm like, okay, that they helped you with the visual, but what about the song that you're performing for the visual? It's crazy that on YouTube for music videos, you don't see who's behind the song and you see who's like did the makeup. It, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. You see the makeup, you see this, the assistant to the director, you know, you'll see uh, cinematography, but you'll never see the audio team. Why don't the Why don't the artists do that? And why like why don't the labels insist on that? It's, it's just totally fucked up. I mean, it's like it's 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 just it's not even it's just like these are the you know when you when you look at movies they credit everyone everybody yeah literally, literally, and photographers photographers, if a photographers f- you know if they don't get credited for a photo they took they like the whole industry gives like has an uproar so like why is this not why is this like cool as it is you know with uh, with audio it's not cool yeah yeah a movie movies take thousands of people to make and literally. Credits go on from you know ten minutes because there's so many people involved, and you'll see everyone. You'll see like assistant to this person to the actor. You'll yeah. see you'll the sixteen see, year old nephew of the you know associate you know you know assistant director. You yeah, know, literally, like literally, gets in the credits. Yeah, everyone gets in gets in the credits, and those things matter because those that means that you worked on the record. You are a part of this this thing, you know. And um, it takes a lot of people to get uh, a song out there and. Um, yeah, so it's just we need that credit for sure. Very important, man. Let's hope that uh, like I don't even know who could take care of this, right? Like I guess it's the tech giants right now, like Spotify and Apple Music, that can maybe help. Uh, yeah, that's an they're easy. That's do, an easy. They're thing not doing they much. Do. Yeah, they can. It's an easy an thing easy. they could do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we don't have to get into Spotify on this <laughs> podcast episode, but and all that stuff. But it is certainly interesting. Uh, just a couple more questions to wrap this interview, but this has been so much fun. Been really great to catch up with you again. Um, yeah, just uh, I, I probably asked you some of these questions in the previous episode, but I'm curious to always hear new things. Uh, maybe maybe your answer has changed. Maybe your answers haven't changed. But mm. uh, creative energies. Uh, I always like to ask people how they stay motivated to do the work they do, and maybe they have some routines or habits that help them kind of stay stay have that fire under their ass to do the work and do it well and and stay like creatively charged i meditate every day i've been meditating since i was seven so do some oh, yeah, uh, you talked you talked about that last time yes. yeah yeah that's still still a big part of my routine getting outside and and, and also just having the privilege of doing this because this is something that i've been <laughs> trying to do since i was like 13 just making music and i always like tell myself you're in a very rare position that you get to do what you love. Not a lot of people actually do what they love. Some people give up on their dreams and they have to take a job and, you know, like there, there's nothing wrong with paying bills and things like that. But the privilege of making music for a living is like awesome. And you just have to re, you know, I retell myself that um, even when things are hard because I'm like, you know, you don't want to quit. You just want to quit the circumstances that you're in. And you're going to quit the feeling that you're in. So it's like you got to just keep um, recalibrating mm-hmm. your gratitude for the ability to do so, you know? Um, yeah. And that yeah. kind of like recharges me. And um, I guess like working. So that helps. Like I don't like 
sitting around. So I'm like, oh, what can I do? Hit up my manager. Like, what meeting, like, what studio can, you know, I'm constantly trying to, like, keep myself busy and motivated and kind of out there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like that New York hustle thing. We yeah, kind of New talked York about hustle. at the beginning. Totally. Totally. Um, and yeah, yeah, the final, the, amazing. And the and the final question of the episode, which I ask on every episode is, and I don't know, I don't remember what you said the first time, and it might be the same, or it may have changed, like 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 I said. Uh, but just looking back on your journey, like, was there something that you did or didn't do that you'd want to say, like, yo, Sam, keep at that. That's going to get you where you want to go. Or maybe, Sam, stop doing that. It's holding you back. What would be that one piece of advice you tell your earlier self? Just lean into the, lean, lean into the, the fear and kind of... Um... Mm. fell forward basically it's uh yes you know it's there's never going to be like easy points in your life and things like that but it's always like your ability to process what you're going through and like trying to like get out of your own way so like more yeah. so of like uh analyzing what's working what isn't working and like trying to get out of you know my own way so like you know just being persistent uh and consistency like we we're talking about that's gonna take you where you need to go and like it's just about um staying grateful and being persistent and having an open mind like a beginner's mind then you'll just reap the benefits from it because like you said it's a it's a long game so it's um, it's a long game yeah and that's uh, great i love it it's such it's such a good word of advice i feel like uh it's all it's been the theme of this chat is like you know to get started you lean into your fear and then to maintain it you got to just keep the momentum and do the reps and do the work and to stay motivated you got to like love it and be grateful for what that you're doing what you love and uh, it's just like the recipe for you know keeping at it and just yeah, having yeah, yeah. you they, know and and then and then having a successful career by just loving it starting it doing it continuing rinsing and repeating and all that stuff so yeah, yeah. i think you just have such a it's such a great attitude and um <laughs> I think it's it's taking you far and will hopefully take you continue to take you far. And um, yeah, man, this was really inspiring. Thank you so much for coming back on the show and uh, sharing words of wisdom with the audience. I appreciate oh, it. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Secret Sonics. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. If you've been digging the show, it would be awesome if you could share this episode or your favorite episode with a friend or two and or leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your podcatcher of choice. That's it for now. Have a great week. Take care and dig in. See you soon. Bye-bye.